So here's what I've been thinking about for the past few days. That controversial story in this week's New Yorker magazine that purported to tell the tale, blow by blow, minute by minute, of the finding and killing of Osama bin Laden. Say what you want about the journalism there. The story makes the case that a huge psychological wound may have been removed for the U.S. military, dating back decades, just with one successful raid. The sacking of Osama bin Laden potentially erases the horrible memories of Black Hawk Down in Somalia back in the 90s. And that fiasco in the desert for Delta Force in 1980 and the failed Iran hostage rescue. Military officials stress that the bin Laden raid was one of many that have demonstrated a new capacity to clandestinely grab or kill an enemy anywhere, anytime. Potentially anywhere in the world. I mean, consider. Does that remove restraint? I mean, would presidents be able to resist grabbing a terrorist leader again? or simply a brutal, troublesome warlord, like in Somalia. That's who they were going after during the Black Hawk Down incident. Or maybe take some hostages in a future battle. After Fidel Castro took power in Cuba, the U.S. tried to invade, tried to assassinate him, once reportedly with special CIA exploding cigars. Didn't work. But given that track record of the U.S. government, could a frustrated commander-in-chief really resist a solid grab-and-go capability against someone who we would love to simply erase. A lot happened in the pursuit of security in the years after September 11th, 2001. Ten years later, are there regrets about all that? Are lessons learned in some sense? Or is it more a matter of practicing makes perfect, a perfect on-the-shelf weapon for any commander-in-chief? It's a new world. What did they say in the bin Laden raid? Geronimo, have a nice day.